This is the man who is all over NBC Sports, my old Sports Center colleague and Susie Schuster's colleague from ABC Sports Days back in the day. He is calling the PGA Tours Rocket Mortgage Classic starting on Thursday through Sunday on Golf Channel. And then, of course, he and Chris Collinsworth will be in Canton, Ohio, calling the Hall of Fame game that can be seen uh, a week from this Thursday on NBC and Peacock. My good friend, Mike Tirico on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. How you doing there, Michael? I mean, there's a million things to cover. First off, yes, sir. greetings from your college stomping grounds of Ann Arbor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that. Secondly, I wasn't planning on being there for the time tomorrow. Yes. But I, I, I will be now if I can watch the Not Rich Eisenberg tee off. On <laughs> well, Mike, you know, here's what you got to do. Um, I yeah. think, you know, I, I don't need you to wake up that early, but at some okay. point, uh, here's what you do. Just tell the crew at the Golf Channel, keep an eye on Mark Hubbard's bag. That's what I need you to do, you know? I, I understand. But maybe, oh, I just thought, it's a four-and-a-half-hour, 4.45 yeah. to play. So maybe when I get to the golf course late morning, I'll catch him on 18. And I'll see <laughs> if he's stayed with the Not Rich Eisen or <laughs> if it wasn't working, maybe he changed sponsors after he told or so. Yes, he can. He can do that. It's yeah. his bag. It's his It's his dryer. But I, we, we kind of, you know, loved following him because he's the one who got in at the Greater Hartford Open, as it used to be called, now the Travelers, because Brooke ha- Brooks left for the, the Live Tour. And we right. thought, like, how great would it, would it be? What a sports story would be if he takes this opportunity and he runs with it. He's been playing pretty well. Actually, that, this that, fellow. That, that happens way too often on tour. And more importantly, you know what this weekend is. What is that? This is the last weekend or week, if you will, without football until <sighs> mid-February. Isn't that the best? I just love it. We, we go, we, we are in Canton, as you said, in eight days. Mm. I, just, I just spent my uh, night and morning going through all 92 Jaguars <laughs> <are> on the roster. <laughs> We're, we're about halfway through the Raiders, so I'm looking forward to that late night, early morning tomorrow, and uh, let, let's go. I'm, I'm ready for game one, and 184 players, uh, 100 mm. of whom will not play. I know that, and many of them won't even, many of them won't, won't even be out there uh, when you call the season opener here in Los Angeles in a, in a, in a few weeks' time. So I'll, I'll, I'll start with you, Mike, by asking yep. you a question. I'm asking uh, all the luminaries that come on this program. Um, with a football uh, bent, uh, who is the which is the team that is the most intriguing team for you entering 2022 to choose one, hmm, Mike Tirico? You know what? I did not realize I am an LWFB. You would <laughs> luminary with a football bent. That, that, that's new. Nice. Uh, yeah, yes. Maybe maybe I'll put that on my golf bag. LWFB. <laughs> Please do so. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, most intriguing team to me, Rich. I'm. Um, I'm so heavy to the AFC because I think there's so many interesting teams there. And I'm going to give you two. Yep. I'm going to give you the teams that played that memorable game, Kansas City and Buffalo. I want to know without Tyree Kill, without one of those five-star megawatt coming off the end pass rushers, will the Chiefs have enough to be at the top of a conference that they've been at the top of really for four or five years here? with so many good teams there. And on the flip side of that, Buffalo is one of those teams that plays the entire season to get back to that point and those 13 seconds. That's a long way between here and there. But let's face it, everybody in Buffalo thinks they should have been in the Super Bowl last year. They think the game we're going to see to open up the NFL season on the kickoff game on September 8th should have been the game we saw in SoFi for Super Bowl 56. And I'm intrigued to see how strong, how confident, how good can this team be trying to get back there? Because as we know, every year is different. Every team's different. It's really hard to continue success in the league. Those are my two right now. And and those are obviously two terrific teams right there. And I'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who doesn't believe Buffalo is the team to beat in the AFC. Um even with the AFC West as deep as it is. But that's part of the reason why I think everyone thinks that people are going to beat each other up in that division. And thus, there's, I mean, to emerge from that division with a shot at the one seed would really be a remarkable achievement for anybody that wins that one. And and, and that's the the only seed that that puts you into the second round of the playoffs that, that Buffalo reached last year. 
Uh, How do you see the AFC West sussing out in your mind, Mike Tarico? Yeah, and and, and just starting, knowing that we have the Raiders to start, just just starting with the discovery phase and you start looking at teams, you start looking at players. I spent, I think, about an hour convincing myself each of the four teams could be the best team in the AFC Mm -hmm. West. You you really can. You go, okay, maybe the Chiefs aren't as good here. Wow, all these pieces – that the Chargers now have. Obviously, you know, with, with the Raiders, you start to look, go, oh, oh, Chandler Jones is here now. So you got Jones and Crosby coming off the edge. Devontae Adams is here. And all, all of that stuff. And you, you pull back and you go, any of these teams can be the team in the AFC West. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's going to be hard to be the one seed out of the AFC West. Now, now how, how good will Miami be, thus giving Buffalo, Miami, and New England as difficult teams in the division? And let's not forget the Jets. That, that Jets offense, I think, is going to hit a hit a good a good patch here during the season. And I think Salah will get the defense if healthy in the right place. And you know, it, it's that stupid time of the year. It's what is it, July twenty fifth? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, it's the time. It's the time of the year that you can legitimately say, "Hey, everybody really can have a good season." And it's not the case. So I, I can't see which team is going to be really bad right now. In the AFC. So which team that you think, uh, Mike Tirico, um, that you think, not on people's radars, will wind yep. up getting flexed into your schedule? <laughs> and, and, and like, uh, say, say, like, Cincinnati is a yeah. perfect example of that. At this point last yeah. year, everyone's right. looking at the back end of their schedule and saying, oh, we got Cincinnati in December. That's a win until Joe Burrow showed up in December, you know? Right. So which team do you think – has the the shot to get flexed into your schedule because nobody saw him coming, Mike Tarico. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's a good one, Rich, because we have so many teams on the schedule this year because so many teams were pretty good. I'm just running through my mind. I don't want to let somebody escape. What if what if Jameis plays as go. well as he played before getting hurt? And what if Michael Thomas, who I saw was out there today, Yep. Uh, running drills, and we haven't seen him in a year. We forget he caught you know about 150 balls from Breeze a couple of years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And what if Dennis Allen all of a sudden wakes New Orleans up with, you know, guys, we we can win like 16 to 10 games and 19 to 13 games. Maybe maybe they're the team that kind of sneaks up on people. Um, that, that that might be the one I'll throw out there right now. It's not on the schedule. It's funny. We're here in Detroit. I, I live in this area. Yep. And we're with some folks uh, hanging out during the summer. And they said, hey, when do you think the Lions will be on Sunday Night Football? It's kind of a half joke, of course. Yeah, right. Said, you know what? Anybody can play their way onto Sunday Night Football. Just look at the Bengals last year. So you're right. There's one every year that you have no expectation, but they do it. So I'll give you New Orleans for now. From your mouth – to the football gods' ears, Detroit at the Jets, week 15 gets flexed in. There you go. There's that. There, I think we just identified it. Um, even you know you got uh, even though you got New England at Vegas, Belichick at McDaniel's. It would take quite a bit to flex the, out of that one, I'd imagine. But there you go. Denver, Detroit at the Jets, week 15. Well, I, flexed. I saw on the I saw on the Lions uh, social media this morning that. Dan Campbell was doing up downs with the team. He taped as, his. As they're doing their drills this morning. I mean, he's. I can't wait for hard knocks. I cannot wait. I think it's going to be entertaining and exciting and good on the Lions, by the way, for it's kind of making a push to change the narrative because look, the attendance was down last year in Detroit. This is a great football city, but even the fans have worn a little thin of it. So they are just trying to reintroduce players, team, and culture. And I think hard knocks will do a little bit of that. And that, that's a team, I'm not saying they're going to play their way onto Sunday Night Football, that's a team that can, in an NFC North, that, you know, if Green Bay is not as great as they have been, it's not going to overwhelm you like the AFC West, let's say. I, I think they could be in line for a significantly improved season from last year. Now, that could be seven wins or eight wins, but I think – they're going in the right direction right now with Campbell. An important detail to add to Dan Campbell doing up-downs with the team is he taped his wrists to do that. <laughs> he, he taped his wrists before doing that with the like, team. Do you, I think it may be as good as the Rex Ryan addressing the team meeting that were a part of the Jets' hard knocks. That, I thought that set the bar, right? Mm-hmm. Like, let's go eat and snacks and all That's that right. stuff. 
I, I think some of the Dan Campbellisms in the team meetings and the, the passion and the fury and the cower esque spit flying from the head coach, I, I think that could be right up there with some of the best stuff we've seen on hard knocks. It doesn't win you a damn game, but it'll be entertaining at least going in. Mike Tarico, my buddy, uh, here on the Rich Eisen show from NBC Sports. Okay, so you are the you're you're in town as well. It's the Rocket Mortgage Classic on Golf Channel that starts on on Thursday. Uh, you and I have not spoken since this, but please tell me, what was it like to be there at St. Andrews and watch Cameron Smith do what he did with pretty much most every human there wanting to see it for Rory? What in the world was that like for you to witness, Mike Tirico? Yeah. Rich, it was, I was talking to a few tour players uh, at an event yesterday about this also. Mm-hmm. It's one of the best back nines in a major championship. <sighs> that you'll ever see, Mm -hmm. and it's given all of that. It was, Rory's got to win this for all the reasons that people have talked about. Uh, The holes were really put in very tricky spots because there wasn't wind. If you don't have wind in St. Andrews, it loses one of its two defenses. The other one are hole locations. So it wasn't like guys were making a ton of birdies later on in the round. For him to shoot 30 on the back nine of a major championship (laughs) with Rory on top of the board at the home of golf without the holes being in easy spots, he played Rich holes 10 through 14 in 15 strokes. Now, I don't know how good your game has gotten in the last few years, but I've played two holes in 15 strokes. You've played two holes in 15 strokes. For him to do that in that situation, that's one of the best back nines ever at a major on Sunday and I don't think we really were ready for it because it just snuck up on everybody because of all the tension being on Rory so good for him great for him yeah I mean the that back nine we were talking about it here Mike it's the only back nine for a major championship that could even be in the same area code or zip code or or universe is is Augusta National where you have holes that you can make eagle on you have holes where you can completely blow up on um, and then there's an iconic hole that, you know, is a bucket list hole for everybody wanting to play. Um, right. And then the finish as well. It, there's nothing like that. That was unbelievable to watch. And I just couldn't believe what I was watching. Yeah, um, no, and, I, I agree with you. It, it kind of snuck up on us, too. I, I really think because you thought it was the two guys, Rory and Hovland, in the last group. And then he was in position, but just. Look, he did it the Players' Championship. When he makes putts, he makes them in bunches, and he's as good a putter as maybe anybody on tour. And he proved that. Have you done the Scotland Golf Tour? I have not. I have not. I, I, so, I, so, I so want to. Let's, I mean, that's a... Let's do it next year. All right. You and, uh, I'm serious. Let, let, uh, let's get, like, a group of fun guys. Okay. Let's, let's go do that. that. That would be a blast. How about, how about uh, I know, Brock, when you're pointing at you, but uh, how about, like, a sports center reunion? How about that? Let's oh get DP. God. Let's get DP. That would be really funny. Um, you Can't know, help would do it. I, I'm serious. Like, let's let's that, let's do that sort of thing. That is exactly that what blast. I would do. I would love that. That, that. that that would be a lot of fun. But they are they're great trips. They're great towns. And uh, I, I will tell everybody who's listening: if you ever do get the chance to go to the Open, uh, it's always good when it's in the UK. Any time it's played, it's really good when it's in Scotland. And when it is at St. Andrews, when it's in Scotland, when it's at St. Andrews, it's the absolute best. This was the fifth one I've been lucky enough to cover, and everyone just delivers. And there's no place uh, that, if you love golf, that compares to the town of St. Andrews. So uh, if you can do it, go do it. And Cam Smith's going to have something to uh, be remembered for forever no matter what tour he ends up on in the next few months or years. No, I know. Good one. Uh, but I'm serious. So we like yeah. we could we could get all of us, we could FaceTime Killer from there, Kilborn. You know, we could just FaceTime him from a pub, right? See what he's up to. No. He can lift his martini glass and his mahogany, uh, you know, walled uh, uh, living room from here in Los Angeles. We'll raise a pint. We could do that, right? Um, oh, my God. We could, who was the first guy you did SportsCenter with? I don't think I've ever asked you that. Who was the first, uh, or, or 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 was it was it LC? Oh, but which oh, oh. who was the first anchor that no, you did it with? I'm going to give you one now. The first sports center I did was at 2:30 in the morning on July. I want to say 14th, uh-huh. a Friday night, 13th or 14th. It was with Jim Bergamo. Jim Bergamo. Yeah, 
Was Jimmy still there when you were there? No, he was gone. Okay. First, by yeah, the way, first day I walked into to work at Sports Center was when right. was when they uh, they shot the Don't Walk commercial. Oh no, is that right? Yes, like the the, the hands across America type commercial. <laughs> Where where you everybody sang you know uh, like we are the world don't walk like that was my yeah, first day. To stop, stop traveling, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. That, that was my first one. Jim Bergamo, huh? Jim Bergamo and then Ann Montgomery were the first couple of people I did Sports Center with, and then uh, I would do a bunch of uh, a bunch of Friday Saturdays in the fall yeah. with Tom Mees, God rest his soul. That's right. And then uh, and then right after I started a few months later. Carl Ravage and Linda Cohn, but I did the bulk of the sports centers I did. Probably 40% of the sports centers I did were with Chris Myers. And we did a lot of 2.30 a.m., half hour, 11 Pacific sports centers. And when they started airing sports center on a loop in the morning every half hour, yeah. uh, that, that helped both, both of our careers because management and other people would see it in, in the morning when they'd wake up. And Chris and I had a, a wonderful thing going and I, I love those times and I always laugh when, you know, Chris is doing NFL games and NASCAR and all great stuff for Fox. And uh, when our paths cross every once in a while, it's just neat to reflect on uh, doing basketball highlights and hockey. I, Chris loved the NBA. He wasn't as big a hockey fan. Right. So he would, he would trade he would trade an NBA highlight block with me for an NHL highlight block. Like, hey, I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple of NHL highlights in the in the C section. <laughs> if you give me a couple NBA games, <laughs> we would trade highlights. It was, it was fun time. Oh my time. gosh! Like one, he, Chris Chris Myers was one of the first sports center anchors I ever crossed paths with after leaving ESPN. Although it wasn't him, we used the old Hollywood Hotel booth. Oh my gosh! For our oh. for our Hall of Fame coverage at NFL Network, we would put it right next to the interstate, and it's. We needed to have sort of an enclosed booth where you could see the hall behind us, but not hear the trucks zipping by I-77. So we used the Hollywood Hotel that Fox used for NASCAR, and I turned to my right and looked next to the host chair, and there was Chris Myers' Paul Mitchell hairspray bottle. So that's the way I ran into... That's the way I ran into Chris. You know, I didn't... (laughs) You know, that's the way I ran ran into Chris back in the day. That, that is so funny. Man, I, I love doing shows with him. He was so good. And he was he was a great reporter and would work the story. If you think about somebody like Chris, a terrific bureau reporter for so many years, right. uh, then crushed it on SportsCenter, Baseball Tonight, up close after Roy Firestone. That's right. And then, uh, then this career, you know, calling NFL games on Fox and hosting um, the, the NASCAR and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. He's like done everything in his career has been on network TV for you know over 30 years and has just been awesome at everything he does. What a, what a great guy. And what a, what a pleasure it was to work with uh, I kid because <laughs> I kid because I care. That's right. Uh, me here, you there, all that business. You're no oh, good. I remember all that. What a time. <laughs> you, you, you're no good. Got replaced with baseball. You, you're not safe. That's right. <laughs> I was tagged out. Man, I, I can think of like a hundred Chris Myers isms uh, doing shows with him, but Good days and fun times. And what I love, Rich, about that yep. is like, so many people from that era that we were all together are all still doing this 25 years later. Um, it's it's you know, fun every time you turn on TV and see somebody from that, that era, that family. So it's uh, Me too. good memories. And every once in a while, you just stumble into a conversation like this about those times. Me too. That's why I, I rarely bring that up when, uh, when I get to chat with you. Mike, thanks for the time. Drive safe wherever Thank you're you going. Uh, I hope to run into you in Canton next week. That would be great. Hope to see you. I, I look forward to that. I am off to check on your golf bag. I'm off to the golf course. There you go. I will give you a full report later in the broadcast. Please, if you do run into Hubbard and his golf bag, text me a photograph. I would love to see it, Mike. I, please. I'm, I, I'm here for you as a Cub reporter on the tour. Well, bless you. I appreciate it. Mike Tirico, you be well. We'll chat soon. Drive safe. You got it, bud. You got it. That's Mike Tirico, everybody, right here on the Rich Eisen Show.